Um, and I just want to complete uh, some of the questioning that I was doing uh, earlier. Ms. Spindor, as, as I know, but uh, as you can uh, explain, the House employs a number of information systems uh, officers, is that correct? Correct. Can you please elaborate on the role of these individuals as it relates to, as you mentioned, continually monitoring House approved vendors? Yes, sir. I'd be glad to. Uh, the individuals that we have that work within our cybersecurity group that are known as security systems officers. There are five of them, and they are essentially responsible for when a request comes in from a vendor, and we are beginning the ATO process to determine their viability as a vendor. They make sure that all the steps are followed that we have done the evaluation as it was intended to be done. And these individuals work around the clock. We've, so far, we've, uh, we have authenticated 36 di different systems and have nine in progress, but these ATOs are reevaluated on a continuous basis. So these individuals stay very busy. So, uh, in short, you may say that uh, they're always checking the work. Yes. Okay. And, by the way, we are talking about our PeopleSoft system and uh, some of our other large systems that we have as well okay. as part of that. Thank you for that. Ms. Kaufman, does the D.C. Health Exchange have information system security, security officers on staff? We do. And may I address something else? There's been a lot of, uh, of um, assertions, many assertions made about how secure our system is. Um, let me just say, we use Cloudflare, FortiGate, Splunk, Tenable, and other security technologies that U.S. intelligence agencies use, Fortune 100 companies use, U.S. Secret Service, Homeland Security, and, I, and the list goes on. We have 24-7 monitoring. We've been under attack since we opened for business October 1, 2013. Right, and I understand that, and that is an impressive list, but the and fact remains there was a breach that, that it goes to the security uh, and the operations, having those systems, having those devices, just as Equifax learned, unless they are continually monitored, unless the oversight is given, unless the policies and procedures that you have address potential human error and that they are enforced, you're going to have these type of breaches. I, I want to continue on my questioning, though. You said yes, that you do have information system security officers on staff. How many? Correct. In addition to uh, an outside firm we use to help us with 24-7 monitoring of our so, system, we have uh, full-time people. We have four people on staff who work in addition to uh, they are, firm we use. Those four people, they're considered information systems security officers, not just IT folks, not just programmers, not just network analysts. They're specifically for security. They, they, they only work on cybersecurity. Okay. And so you have four, and you said and, a vendor. And we use supplemental staff from a, a cybersecurity company to supplement the four, and then internally, when we need to pull in more people, we do. So do these four that uh, you've alluded to, do they continually monitor and test your vendors for cybersecurity vulnerabilities? Yes, they, they, they test everything. They look at the code, they look at the environment, they engage in pen testing, uh, they look at you know, the 24-7 logs we get. Uh, Do they look at server configurations? They look at everything. But something got missed. Something got missed, and that is why I wanted an external investigator to help me figure out how we missed this, why it was missed, so it never gets repeated again. 